To gain these things that are material, the things which we see that shall all pass away, the things which we behold, the moth and rust are able to corrupt it. But there's one thing that should never pass away, one thing that should never be corrupted, and that is the Dabar, the word that is spoken by Almighty Yahweh. It should, never, it should never fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to begin in Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. And I'm going to somewhat try to conclude this throughout this chapter of Joel concerning the day of Almighty Yahweh. But throughout this, I want to veer to other examples throughout Torah concerning the day of Almighty Yahweh. And if you would just do a simple search and see what is of Yah, of Yahweh, there's the people of Yahweh, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the blessings, the Berechiah of Yahweh. But what I was looking at mostly was just, just the day of Yahweh. Hallelujah. So let us begin this journey. In this day, we are in these last days. Hallelujah. It says in Yoel chapter 2, verse 1, Blow you the shofar in Zion, the warning, and sound an alarm in my Kodesh mountain, my most high places. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, tremble to be afraid, to shake. An earthquake could not even amount to this trembling yes. of the inhabitations of the land. It says, for the Yom, the day of Yahweh comes. Do you believe that the day of Yahweh comes? It is nigh, even closer than what we believe, Israel. Yeah. For it is nigh at hand. And it says this. It's not going to be a day of brightness, shining of the sun, but it says a day of darkness, Koshe, a day of darkness, Israel. Who want to abide in darkness? To be alone, to be destitute. You cannot see, there's no vision. You cannot see even the very fingers of your hand in front of your face. That's the truth. Go ahead. Nothing to guide you. Nothing to lead you. So dark that, there, that the light is even dim and dark in Israel. No Did not Yahweh create both night and day, Israel? Yeah. So just as surety as the night is setting upon us, Yet there's a day that we can look forward to of light. Yes. But I'm going to deal with just the darkness. Hoshe, obscurity, and of gloominess. It says a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Imagine that, thick darkness. Usually when we use the word thick, we think of a form that we can feel with our very hands. Thick. The woods are thick. The grass, thick. But can you imagine darkness being thick? Yes. That even the very surrounding, the surroundings of it, you can actually feel it, Yisrael. Sure. Thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. You ever seen how the, the sun spreads upon the mountains? It just overtakes the mountains. Not only that, the valleys. If you watch the sun as it arises in the morning, it's not very long that the brightness of that illuminates what we see on this part of the old land. But it said that the darkness shall take place this way. A day of clouds and of darkness as the morning spreads upon the mountains. A great rob, much many people, 
Many people, Yisrael, nations, strong. There has not been ever like, it's talking about this nation or this people, this great army, neither shall be any more after it. This is concerning the army of Almighty Yahweh, his great army, Israel. Even to the years of many generations, there is none like it. Even the armament of this nation is considered great among the world. But it's nothing compared to Yahweh's army. Listen to what it says that describes this army that should come in this great day of darkness. A fire devours before them. So nothing should stand within their way. It should be devoured like a fire. And behind them a flame, so anything that is left behind this great army is burnt up. There's just shimmers, glimmers of light, yeah. flickering of the flame. There's nothing left, desolate. Sure it, it says, the land is as a garden of Eden before them, yet their eyes are set upon obeying the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And behind them a desolate wilderness. They're not concerned about what's behind them. What's behind them does not cause them to be afraid. Yes, and nothing shall escape them. Do we think we shall escape the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? Don't you know his judgment, his mishpat, is his great army Israel? And nothing's going to stand in front of his judgment? And after his judgment takes place, nothing shall be left behind. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Horses. I don't know if it, you have experience seeing the running of horses, the strength of them. Uh, you don't want to stand in the way right. of the running or the gallop, galloping of horses, a stampede as they call it. Nothing in their way stops them. Nothing. And they trample anything in their path, Yisrael. Yes. As a horseman, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on top of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of, fly, of fire that devours the stubble. You ever listen to the fire as it roars, as it rages, as it burns and devours wood or the stubble? Israel, yeah. Don't you know that's what the Torah of Yahweh does? And that's what's going to happen upon this great day of Almighty Yahweh. A strong people set in battle array. So they have their garments. What garments should we be wearing, Yisrael? Yes, yes, yes. What armaments are they wearing? What shoes are they wearing? Think about that. Yeah. What are they clothed with? They are clothed with the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And their feet are shone with the preparation. They're ready. Yeah. They're ready for the battle, Yisrael. Their sword is about their side. And their loins are girdled about with Torah, with truth. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. Can you imagine this judgment? The faces of the people. Israel. All faces shall gather blackness. I don't think we ever experienced that truly. We see sadness upon the faces of people. Even those that are in very serious turmoil. Israel, yeah. But yet, blackness, darkness upon the faces, no hope, no enlightening of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, no guiding path for one to walk in. It says this army, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. So not even the wall or what we place before Yahweh or any kind of resistance shall stop the army of the Torah of this, war, this army, great army of Almighty Yahweh. And they shall march everyone on his ways in the direct path, in the path. They're going to execute the judgment that Yahweh has placed them to execute. And they shall not break their ranks. They're not divided. This should be also as Yisrael, Yisrael. This should be an example of us, Israel. Yeah. For we are the army of Almighty Yahweh, are we not? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Should we not walk in the Torah and the direct, the way that Yahweh has instructed us to walk in? If we walk in that way, we will be, there's nothing that could withstand us, Yisrael. Yeah. Whether it be trials, whether it be tribulations, it's okay, that's easy for you to say. But it's not what I say. Because what I say have no strength. But when the Torah of Yah says it, Yisrael, Yah, you should take heed. So let's stop the pity party. Those of you who are listening by via of live stream, you're a young man, Zach. You have not experienced what I have experienced. Yet that is true. But yet Yahshua has experienced it, and the Torah of Yah Yahweh has foretold it. So stand in the Torah of Yahweh. Stand in the might of Yahweh. Be rooted and grounded in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. The word, the Torah of Yahweh is our strength. The Torah of Yahweh keeps us and it guides us. It leads us just as it leads this great army, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. So don't come with me with that, that you're young. The Torah even also says, let not the Zarkain despise the youth. But I'm speaking by the inspiration of Torah tonight, Israel. So let's get out of our emotions. Don't let the flesh burden you down. Let us stand upon the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. If they shall not break their ranks, verse 8, neither shall one thrust another. Can you imagine this army running in their ranks? The lines are straight. Every move is precise. It is calculated. They're not stabbing or bumping into one another, Yisrael. They shall walk valiant as a valiant warrior in his path. A valiant warrior, Yisrael. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. So whatever wounds us, Yisrael, or stabs us, or as the enemy tries to confront us and stop us as we are on this journey, on this way of Yahweh, it says here that we shall not be wound, wounded, Yisrael. They shall run to and fro in the city and shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses and shall enter in the windows like a thief. I will get to that verse, but did not it say that this day of Yahweh shall come as or likened unto a thief in the night? Don't you know that there were five that was foolish, that experienced that? Mm -hmm. That it was time when the bridegroom calleth and they were not ready? Mm -hmm. It was as a thief in the night. It come upon them. Were not the five foolish asleep? Mm -hmm. But also the five wise. They also were asleep and slumbered, Yisrael. But what was the difference? They were prepared. They were as a prepared army. Hallelujah. Verse 10. The earth shall quake before them, and the Shemayim shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. Oh, shit. Darkness, Israel. This is exclaiming unto us how the day of Yahweh is going to be like Israel. It says the stars withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army. Do we hear the uttering of the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Yisrael, are we taking heed unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh? For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executes his debah, his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible. Can you imagine that? Terror? Terror. Terrible. Who can abide in it? Who can abide in this great day of Almighty Yahweh? of great darkness, whereby this great army is going forth and it is slaying, killing. Oh, y'all, y'all doesn't kill. Yes, he does. Y'all kills. And he destroys. You know, I, I looked up that word destroy and there's, there's two examples in the Hebrew. But one thing that um, rested in my bosom was he wipes out. At any time, when you're washing dishes, if you really want the dish or you want to make sure that dish is clean, what do you do? You wipe it. You wipe it out. 
So in order for Yahweh to place his male coot, he must wipe out Yisrael. He must cleanse. He must purge first his house. Because does not this judgment, does it begin in the house of Almighty Yahweh? Or does it begin in the world? No, upon Yisrael, upon his bayit. So he's going to wipe us, Yisrael. The bayit of Yahweh, he's going to wipe it clean. Let me start over, verse 11. Yahweh shall utterly utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for it is strong and executes his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Verse 12. Therefore also know, Yisrael, saith Yahweh. Therefore also now, saith Yahweh, turn you even to me with some of your left. Does it say all? Coal? Don't you know that leaves nothing? It includes everything. So if our Levim, if our hearts are scattered or broken up and scattered abroad, we're not giving Yahweh all, are we? He demands, he commands, call all of your living, your heart, your mind. And also this, and this uh, many of us do not like. And with fasting. So not only do we present call all of our love unto Yahweh, he also says he wants us to do it with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Where's the weeping Israel? Where's the crying between the porch and the altar Israel? Don't you know when he talks about the porch and before I you know, understood what the scripture said, I would think which it does make sense between your dwelling and the bayat of Yahweh. But it all, what it's exclaiming is in the bayat, yeah. the outer courts of the bayat, sure. and into the bayat of Yahweh should be this great wailing and travail and weeping. Verse 13. And render, give up, render your left and not your garments. Yahweh is tired of us rending our garments, Yisrael. He's tired of us going through the motions, rending our garment and sprinkling the ashes. No, he wants us to rent our left before him and not your garments and turn to Yahweh your Abba, for he is kind. Yes, he is. Do we see the kindness of Yahweh in all this yes, darkness yes, yes. and all this wrath, Yisrael? Yeah. Don't you know even through this all that we are covered by the wings of almighty Yahweh, yes, Yisrael? Yes, Hallelujah. Even through all this, Yisrael. And he is kind. And it says, benevolent. Yes. And compassionate. Yes. Slow to anger. Don't you know Yahweh, he is slow to anger, Yisrael? Yeah. But we have coerced, or we have antagonized him so much, Yisrael. And of great kindness. And repent him of evil. Evil? Does Yahweh show evilness, Israel? Did he not create both light and darkness? Don't you know Yahweh, he will even show evil unto those that do not walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? You think Satan is the orchestrator of evil, Israel? No. No, we got it wrong, Israel. One thing that I learned, in order for us to understand the Ahava of Yahweh, we must understand the hate of Yah. Like the song I used to hear in my youth, you can't have one without the other. So in order for, in order for us to understand Yahweh's Ahava, yeah. we must understand his hate. No doubt about it. In order to understand the tub of Yah, we, all, we also must understand the other side, the evil, sure that, he, that he will bestow or his judgment upon a nation that does not walk in his Torah, Yisrael. Verse 14. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a Berdekiah or a blessing behind him, even a grain offering and a drink offering to Yahweh, your Abba. Who knows what he may do, Yisrael. Verse 15. 
verse 15. Blow the shofar in Zion. Make there be a solemn feast or a set apart feast unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes, we must. Call a solemn assembly. Yes. Are we solemn tonight, Israel? Yes. This assembly, have we gathered together, Israel, to hear the Torah of Yahweh and the judgments of Almighty Yahweh? Verse 16. Gather the people, the congregation, and assemble the Zakain, the elders. Gather the bang, the children, and those that suck the breast. So that does not exclude anyone, does it, Israel? Do we exclude those of our own house, Israel? Israel, it's a serious thing that we all come together into the bed of Almighty Yahweh. These feast days, Israel, hallelujah. He said, bring them all, the children, those that even suck on the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth. Of his chamber. Did I not talk about how the bridegroom came to the five wise and the five foolish, and the foolish were not ready, Israel? Beautiful. Beautiful. And the bride out of her closet. Verse 17. Yes. Let the Kohen of Almighty Yahweh, the Zod King, let them be weeping between the porch and the altar, yes, and let them say, Spare, Spare me, your God. people, Israel, God. Yahweh. Spare your people, y'all. Yes, Do we cry that, Israel, y'all? For Yahweh to spare us. Zakain, yes. do we cry that unto Almighty Yahweh? For him to spare Israel, y'all. Spare Israel, y'all. Your people, O Yahweh, your nation. And give not your heritage to reproach or to be mocked or blasphemed. That the heathen should rule over them. Therefore, should they say among the people, yes. where is your almighty? Yes. 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 As scripture speaks, Yisrael, so are we now in this generation. There are those that look upon us, our numbers, they see how we are scattered. Mm -hmm. Even our minds being scattered, Yisrael. Yes, we don't abide together. Yes. And they wonder, who, who is their almighty one? Where is their almighty one? What do we profess in our living, Israel? When the world look at us, what do they see? Do they see a mirror image of themselves? Or do they see a people that are set apart, that are peculiar unto Almighty Yahweh? Or are we just like them? Israel, are we just like them? Hallelujah. The great day of Almighty Yahweh, a day of gloominess, of darkness, of terror. Hallelujah. Let me go on to another example. So we're going to move out of Yoel, chapter 2. And I want to go to Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 1. I want to begin reading. Also talking about the wrath of Almighty Yahweh, his great army, Israel. Hallelujah. It says in Isaiah... Chapter 13, verse 1. It says, The burden of Babylon, which Yeshua saw, I mean, which Yeshua the son of Amos did see. So this is a vision, Israel. Lift up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice of them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the noble. I have commanded my Kodesh ones. I've also called my mighty ones for my anger, yes. even them that rejoice in my highness. Yes. Verse 4. The noise of the multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people. This is talking about the army again of Almighty Yahweh. A tumultuous noise, a great noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. It says Yahweh of hosts musters the hosts of the battle. Or he orchestrates it 
Or he is the commander and chief. He is above. He gives Torah or commandment unto this multitude or this great army. Verse 5. They come from a far country, from the end of Shemayim's, even Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy some of the land. The whole land? So you mean to tell me this scripture is saying that nothing's going to be left, that he's going to destroy, he's going to wipe out, he's going to cleanse, purge the whole land, Israel? Yes. Should we not as a people, are we not just land, Israel? Sure. Are we not dirt? Yeah, that's what we are. So even our bodies, Israel, our minds, our nephews should be purged of everything. Everything that does not line up with the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Everything that offends Almighty Yahweh. But you know everything that offends him, that he's going to cast it down into the pits of darkness, Yisrael, to destroy the whole land. He says, how you weep, mourn, cry out. How? I don't think we've really heard wailing or howling as the scripture describes. How? You ever heard dogs howl when there's a siren yeah. that goes by? They almost cannot help themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the, truth. Yeah. the sound of that makes them wail. And we have a group of them together. It's very eerie. Yes, it is. The wailing or the howling of a dog. But he said to howl you. For the day, the yom, the day of Yahweh is at hand. Where's the howling? Where's the crying, Israel? Hallelujah. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty One. Therefore shall the hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. We even see that even now, Israel. The hands of man, they believe their hands are strong, that they're able to grip and to hold. They have become weakened. It says that their heart or their left shall melt, shall pour out, Yisrael. Verse 8. And they shall be what? Afraid. Yes, they shall. Afraid. It said, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. Now that's a great pain. As a woman travails, Israel, I know many times, not many times, but yes, many times I've heard how traumatic that is, a woman giving birth, Israel. I even heard it explained that it seems like they have gone to the valley of death and come back. So is that, is, is that um, horrible or is that painful, Israel? Pain as a woman that travails, because if it wasn't so, the scripture would not use that as an example. We'll use another example. You know what? That's beautiful. They shall be amazed at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, it says, the yom of Yahweh comes. Cruel. Uh, Both. Yes, sir. So we're going to get a total package. Yes, sir. The world's going to receive the olam, a total package. Comes. Cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. I don't believe we're comprehending what, we, what I'm reading, Israel. Because really, in my mind, I cannot comprehend it. Israel. This is going to be beyond anything that the world has ever seen or experienced. To lay the land desolate, he shall destroy the sinners. Therefore, out of it, out of the old lamb, out of the land. He's going to purge his house, Israel. Yeah. This is more than just ascribing how he's going to destroy the land, but also how he's going to cleanse his house, Israel. Verse 10. For the stars of the Shemayims and the constellations thereof shall not give the light, and the sun shall be darkened in his going forth. This is a lot of darkness, Israel. A lot of gloom. A lot of rage. And the moon shall not cease, shall not cause her light to shine. And it says in verse 11, And I will punish the world for their evil. 
and the wicked for their iniquity. Who is the Rasha? Yeah. The wicked, Israel. Yeah. Yes. Is it just the people of the world and of the nations? This is also talking about the wickedness that is in the bayad of Almighty Yahweh, Yisra'ya. Yeah. See, we're not going to escape Yahweh in our sins. Mm -hmm. We're not going to escape Yahweh trampling the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach under our feet. We're not going to escape Yahweh with our filthy imaginations, Yisra'ya. We're not going to escape Yahweh with our lying and our false pretense before him. Verse 11, but I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. He's going to stop all this, Israel. Yeah. The arrogancy of the proud. You don't you know there's people that, that believe that they cannot be touched by a 10-foot pole? They're arrogant. They're haughty. They're high-minded. High -minded. They think little of everyone else. But think highly of themselves. And I would call the errors, the egg, the, the errors, I'm sorry, the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the tyrants. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. This is talking about the day of Yahweh now. Even a Ben Adam than the golden wedge of Ophrah. Without price, Israel, a price cannot be laid upon a man. And a man is one that has the Torah of Yahweh. The Torah of Yahweh leads and guides him in all things. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach a pure example of a man, an Adam, as Yahweh wanted it to be from the beginning? Hallelujah. Therefore, I will shake the Shemayims, and the old them, the earth, shall be removed out of her place. My, my. In the wrath of Yahweh of hosts, and in the days of his fierce anger. Verse 14. And it shall be as the chase row, and as a sheep that no man takes up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee everyone into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, shall be pierced. Don't you desire, don't you, we should want the Torah of Yahweh to pierce us, Yisrael. This is the Torah, the word of Yahweh, going forth, Yisrael. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined to them shall fall by the sword. So we must be careful even what we join ourselves unto, Yisrael. We should not join ourselves unto idols. And idols are more than just what we think are statues. Yes, come on. You can have a family member could be an idol. Mm -hmm. Money could be your idol. Yes. You find more men worshiping money yes, come on. than so-called statues, Yisrael. Come on. Your thoughts did not the scripture talk about the haughty, the haughty, yes. the high-minded. Yes. That, that high mind could be your idol. So idols are more than what we want to category as things that don't breathe or move, Yisrael. Yeah. That's all right. Beautiful. Everyone that is joined to them shall fall by the sword. And listen to this in verse 16. They're children. Oh, Yahweh wouldn't kill a child. It says here their children also shall be dashed. That's violent. That's, that's, what kind of man in, con in his conscience would dash a child with a sword in pieces? This is talking about the day of Almighty Yah. We don't know Yahweh, Yisrael, Yah. We deem a child as being precious, and they are precious, Yisrael, Yah. But in this day, it says that Yahweh shall dash to pieces their children. Uh -huh. Whose children? They're, if we back up, we will see those that are joined. Joined to who? Everyone that is found, yes. that is not obeying the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, shall be thrust through. And those that are joined unto them 
shall fall by the sword, and their children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes. I can't think of anything more cruel than seeing my child dash before me. We don't take Yahweh seriously, do we, Israel? Yah? Before my eyes, before my eyes, Israel, Yah, is this talking about the days of Yahweh? Are we not in the last days, Israel? Yah? Don't you know that even this is upon us, even nigh, even at the door? It says that the houses shall be spoiled, rotten, spoiled. Nothing in it shall be of worth. And their wives, my, ravished. Ravished. Have we allowed the world to ravish us, to rape us, Israel? Yes, we have. To take the Torah out of our left? Yes. Hallelujah. Preach to us, yes. So, even that being upon the house of Israel, the world has done this to us, has it not? Yes. Don't you know the recompense, the judgment unto Yahweh? Don't you know whatever a man sow, that shall he also reap? Yes. So even Yahweh is going to rape and ravish them. Verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, and I will not regard silver and as for gold. They shall not delight in it. So even though even the riches, the silver, the gold, the treasures, Israel, even at this time, man shall not delight in it. It will have no worth unto them, Yisrael. This is talking about the day of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Let's move on. Another example of the day, the Yom of Almighty Yahweh. Isaiah, Yeshaya, chapter 22, verse 1. Hallelujah. Another vision. Did we not talk about in the teaching concerning the vision of the last days, Yisrael? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. Yes, yes. And they shall have no pity. No pity. No remorse. There will not even be a thought given to it, Israel. No pity on the fruit of the womb. Of the womb. So even that which is not even birth yet, that yet lies within the womb, mm -hmm. shall be dashed. The fruit of the womb shall be dashed into pieces also. The eyes shall not spare the children. That's what he says. The eyes shall not spare this great army, the Dabar. You know, the Torah of Yahweh does not spare Israel. No, it doesn't. It doesn't spare anyone. From the least of us to the greatest of us, it do not spare. Hallelujah. 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 Let us move along, Israel, to Isaiah 22, verse 1. Hallelujah. I have quite a bit of reading, so bear with me, Israel. Hallelujah. Concerning the Yom, the day of Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 1. The burden of the valley of vision. The valley of vision. What ails you now? That you are holy or altogether going up onto the housetops. Yes, yeah. Come on. You that are full of stirs and tumultuous city. A jealous city. Your slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. Verse 3. All your rulers are fled together. They are bound by anchors. All that are found in you are bound together, which have fled from afar. Therefore said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly, never not to comfort me, because of the spoiling of the daughters of my people. For it is a day, a yom of trouble, and of treading down, or trotting down. Everything 
that stand shall be laid low. Sure shall. A perplexity. Yes. What does it say there? I want you to read that. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 5. Read that with me, Israel. Are we there? Yes. Let's start over. I want all, all, us all to read this. For in the of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the sovereign Yahweh of hosts in the valley of vision. Yes? To the mountains. So what is this orchestrated by? Who is causing this, even in the valley of vision? The place where seemingly the word of Yahweh gives us imuna to press. That's what visions do, do doesn't it? It gives us the vision or the time or for us that we can have imuna to press on. So it says even the perplexity of this destruction of this is by the sovereign Yahweh of hosts in this valley of vision. Breaking down the walls. Don't you know the walls are placed to divide, yes, yes. to keep yes. something in, yes. and to keep something out, Israel, yes. and of crying to the mountains. It says in verse 6, And Adam bare the quiver with the chariots of Adam and horsemen, right. and Kerr uncovered the shed. Verse 7, And it shall come to pass, that your choicest valley shall be full of chariots. Talking about the armies of Yah. Yeah. And of the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. Sure. This is talking about the Yom, the day of Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. Yeah. Let's move on to Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. Another example concerning this Yom or this day of Almighty Yahweh. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 15 says, For in the Yom, the day of Yahweh, for in the, for in the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen. Yes. Again, Israel, remember, this is not just talking about those that are outside the Bayah. This is talking about all the heathen. Yes. Even the heathen within the gate. The heathen mindset of Yisrael, yeah. the things that we work that are not of Almighty Yah. Mm -hmm. As you have done, it shall be done unto you. So you sow unto the wind, we're going to weep the whirlwind. Yes, yes. Your reward shall return upon your own head, it says. Verse 16. For as you have drunk a for as you have drunk upon my Kodesh mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yes, they shall drink. And they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Shall be. So yet, even in all this, Yisrael, for us, that are upon the high place, Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Yes. And there shall be Kodesh, righteousness, cleansing. Yes. And the house of Yaakov, the house of Yaakov, yes. shall possess their possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even in this day, Yisrael, yes. of gloom, of sadness, of horror, of terror, yet we have hope. And yet there is still a place for the house of Yisrael. What is this place? This place is in the Dabar of Almighty Yahweh. In Yahshua HaMashiach. That's where we find our protection, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Again, another example I want to bring out. In Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Concerning the Yom of Almighty Yahweh. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Proclaims unto us, Yisrael. Behold, the Yom of Yahweh comes. The day of Yahweh. Yes, yes. 
This is his possession. This is his time, Israel. He's not giving this to anyone but for himself. Behold, the day of Yahweh comes, and your spoil shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the women ravished. And half the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. When shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations? And when he fought in the day of battle, as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem, Jerusalem upon the east. And the mountain of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And the half of the mountain shall, remove, shall be removed towards the north and half of it towards the south, Israel. Concerning the day of Yahweh. So even Yahweh is going to place a, a divide, Israel. He's going to cut a shunder as far as the east is unto the west. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And the north is from the south. He's going to set a divide. Let's move to Acts chapter 2, verse 16. I'm going to read 16 through verse 21. The second chapter of, of Acts. Hallelujah. That's all right. But this is that which was spoken by the Nabi, the prophet Yoel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Yahweh, that I will pour out my Ruach upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters they shall prophesy. Yes. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And my servants and my handmaids will pour, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out in those days my Ruach, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the Shemayans above, and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire, vapor and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness on this great day, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day, the Yom of Almighty Yahweh come. So it is not telling us, Israel, before the great, it says, and notable day of Yahweh, yes. what is going to transpire and what is going to happen. If you would look around you, Israel, at this world, sure. it's becoming darker, more wicked. There's more rebellion against Almighty Yahweh and the word of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever. Now, this is not talking about everyone. Yes. Whosoever. This is talking about a Pacific people, this whosoever, Israel. This is not talking about an adulterous man, been adulterous all his days, and all of a sudden he calls upon the name of Yahweh that he is saved or he is preserved. This is talking about a certain people, Israel. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Almighty Yahweh shall be saved. And who's going to call upon the name of Yahweh? Who's going to call upon his name? Those that know his name. Those that walk in the Torah. Knowing the name of Yahweh is more than just saying his name. And because you say his name don't mean you know it. There must be an experience with Almighty Yahweh. That's who's going to call upon his name. Those that have walked in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and have not wavered. That's who are going to have this salvation are going to be saved 
as they call upon the name of Almighty Yahweh. And somehow we want to take scriptures like this and we want to hold on to those kind of scriptures as, as giving us some kind of, of leverage against the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Well, I don't have to walk up, right? All I have to do is call on his name. You're not going to call upon his name. If you're not walking to the Torah of Yahweh, you're not going to call upon his name. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Almighty Yahweh shall be saved. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Thessalonica, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. Hallelujah. And I have a few more examples of this. Zakin Yoramia, you're drilling us. The Torah of Yahweh drills us. What does a drill sergeant do? What is his duty? To take you through the same exercises, the same practices, continuously. They have to drill it into you. When you drill something, what do you do? You force an object into it. And it leaves a print, it leaves a mark, does it not? Yeah. Whether it's with a drill bit, it leaves a hole, it leaves a mark that that thing has been penetrated. So Yahweh is going to drill the house of Yisrael. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But at the times and the season, ah, oh, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. That's all right. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so comes as a thief in the night. Yes. Do we truly know that, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we truly have no need, Yisrael? Or is there a need today? Don't you understand why we must be grounded in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? That this scripture, this letter may come to pass. He said, I have no need that I write unto you, but yet I'm glad he did write unto us. For you yourselves know perfectly that in the day of Yahweh, so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Shalom, peace, and safety, then sudden destruction, talking about the day of Yahweh, the Yom of Yah, comes upon them as travail, again, that example, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Did anything escape the great army of Yahweh? A fire before this great army, and behind them stubble? Verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, don't you glad Yahshua HaMashiach yes. did not leave us in darkness, Yisrael? Yes. That he revealed his light, Yahshua being the light. That this day should overtake us as a thief. You are all children of the light. Yes. And the children of the day. Yes. We are not of the night, yes. nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. We must be sober, Yisrael. Yes, we, we must watch yes. as looking ahead aforetime that we may await this great yom, this great day of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. For, that shall, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. We must be vigilant. Our eyes must be open, Yisrael. Yes. Putting on the breastplate. Is it not a type of armament mm -hmm. that protects us from the fiery darts of the enemy, Yisrael? Yes. Putting on the breastplate of Imuna, faith, and of Ahava, of love. For a helmet, the hope of salvation. Yes. And Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. Yes. Verse 9. For Yahweh has not appointed unto us wrath. No, he has appointed unto the house of Israel, though that walk in the Torah of Yahweh. Though his wrath. But to obtain salvation through our master Yahshua HaMashiach. Is not Yahshua HaMashiach the word made flesh? Hallelujah. Were not we preserved by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? 
So just as the Torah destroys, so also the Torah preserve us, Israel. Move it along. Hallelujah. I'm coming to a close, Israel. Moving along. I want us to understand these are the Yom. These are Yahweh's days. Did he not give us the Shabbat, Israel, that we may rest? But this day, he's taking this one for himself. That's why it is the Yom, the day of Almighty Yahweh. It's his day. Second Kepha, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. He exhorts us here, Yisrael, Kepha. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. And in this knowledge, Yahweh is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering toward us, Israel. Not willing that any should perish. No. Now this is again talking about those that stand upon the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him to repentance. Yes. Have we not turned from the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Well, his judgment is for us to turn, to shew back unto him with repentance. Sure Verse 10. Sure but the young the day of Yahweh, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the Shemayims shall pass away with a great noise. What is that noise? Yes. Think about that. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be Burnt up. I would like to think of that great noise as Yahshua HaMashiach coming with the voice of a shofar Yisrael, the great noise. Verse 11. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of person? Seeing how all these things shall be dissolved, all these examples that I have read, Yisrael, of the destruction of Almighty Yahweh, things being dissolved, brought to nothing. What manner of persons, of people, what kind of nations ought we to be, ought you to be, in all Kodesh conversation? All Kodesh conversation. Are we having Kodesh conversations? Are they led by the bar of Yahweh? Are there foolishness and frivolity in our conversations, Yisrael? Being sissious. Verse 12, looking and hastening to the coming of the Yom, the day of Almighty Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Can you imagine that? The heavens being on fire and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, according to his promise, look for a new Shemayim and a new Olam Yisrael. Isn't that what we're looking for? Hallelujah. If we know all these things that we see are going to be dissolved, yet our hopes are set upon the things that are in the Shemayim Yisrael. Wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, is that what we're looking for, Yisrael? Is that what our hopes are set upon? It says we must be, be diligent. We must be diligent, Yisrael. That you may be found of him in Shalom. How are we going to be found of Yahweh in Shalom? There's only one way to be found of Yahweh in Shalom. And that is covered by the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Did not when the wrath of Almighty Yahweh came through um, Mizraim, Egypt, what did the Melachim, what did it see? It saw the dom upon the doorpost, Israel. So we must have the dom of Yahshua upon our doorpost. We must have the Torah of Yahweh poured upon us, Israel. Being without spot or and blameless, Israel. So we must be without spot, without blemish, and found blameless in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. What can we do to ourselves to cleanse ourselves, Israel? 
There's nothing we can do of our own strength, of our own might, but it's only through the Torah, the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we will be able to be, to be found spotless and blameless before Almighty Yahweh. Let's move to uh, Gilyana, Revelations chapter 16, verse 13 through 15, I do want to read. Hallelujah. As I begin to bring this message to a close, Israel. Hallelujah. You know, above all things, I, I want us, I want this to rest upon our lives that we understand there is a day of Yahweh, the ending of all things, Israel. And it's not going to be a, a day of happiness where people are going to be jumping around, shouting voices of joy, but it's a day of gloominess and of terror. Hallelujah. And in the nation of Almighty Yahweh. Guyana, Revelation 16, verse 13, another example of the day of Yahweh. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the pseudo prophet, the false prophet. It says, For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day yes. of Yahweh yes. Yes. Almighty. Don't you know that even at this day, that even the fallen spirits or the devils, those that fell from the Shemaiah with, with uh, Satan, they're going to try to come against Almighty Yahweh. But they're not going to stand, Yisrael. They're not going to stand. They're going to gather themselves to battle in the great day of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. He said, blessed is he that watches. Yes, we must be vigilant. We must watch Israel and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Yes, yes. Concerning the day of Almighty Yahweh. So it's a day of gloominess of darkness, of great judgment, of great terror among and upon the Olel. Now let us move back for a moment, back to Yoel chapter 2, verse 18. Hallelujah. This is our only hope, Israel. Our only hope is in the, is in the, the bar of Yahweh. Yes. Was not this reading out of the Torah of Almighty Yah? Yes. So even, we hope even upon this great day that all things that has been spoken of Almighty Yahweh shall be brought to pass, Israel. Yeah. Back to Yoel, chapter 2, verse 18. Then, then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. He's not going to allow Israel, yeah. the elect, and we heard about the elect, the small portion that is left after all this Israel. Then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yes, Yahweh will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove afar off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a barren land and desolate. With his face towards the east sea, east sea, and his hinder parts towards the utmost sea. And his stink shall come, and his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up, because he has gone, he has done great things. For not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh, he will do great things, Israel. Yeah. So even at this time, even at this great day, as I have shown examples and example upon example of the great day of Almighty Yahweh, is this a day that we should also rejoice in Israel? Yeah. That Yahweh, he's going to take care of us. Yeah. That he's going to preserve us. Yeah. A small remnant yeah. of people. He says, be not afraid. You beasts of the field. Yes. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. Yes. 
For the tree bears her fruit, the fig tree, and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your Abba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he has given you the former rain moderately. Don't you know that when you're watering a garden, you don't want to overwater? So you must water in moderation. He knows exactly how much of the ruach, how much of the rain to give us, Yisrael, at the time. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. And there's time when you need a deep soaking into the ground that the roots of the plants may absorb the water. The former rain and the latter rain in his first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and of oil. And he said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, and that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I have sent among you. Well, Zarkane, okay. this is talking about a totally different time. No, it's not. The Torah of Yahweh, the word of Yahweh, is a now word, is it not? So even though I'm tying these things together, Israel, it all joins together, fitly and in order. Because even after all these things, we shall receive our reward and our inheritance in the Melchut and in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. So yes, the vats are going to be full. The wine and the oil is going to overflow in the mighty kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I bring this to an end, Israel, verse 28. I'm going to read 28. Because there's another point in this I do want to get to. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm about through. I just got a few more verses, Israel. Hallelujah. As I bring this to an end. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, in verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my ruach, the ruach again, the pouring. We need his pouring, Israel. We need his rain upon our flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Have we not read this example yeah. throughout Torah more than one time? Yeah. So if we see it one time, when we see it again, is that not a second witness? Yeah. Yeah. So these things shall be Israel. Yeah. So don't let your hearts faint. Yahweh is going to pour his rain upon us. It seems that we are parched now. Yeah. And we are. We're dried up. But yet he's going to send his rains, Israel, yeah, upon us. Yeah. And we shall be refilled. And, and, and hydrated, Israel, brought, brought back to life. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the handmaids of those days will I pull out my ruach. And I will show wonders in the Shemayims and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day, the, dawn, the, the yom, of Almighty Yahweh yeah. come. Hallelujah. 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 That's all I have for tonight, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. I pray this was an inspiration to us all that we look forward because Yahweh, believe me, he's looking forward to this day. So should we also look forward to this day, Israel. For this the Yom of Yahweh, his day, should be the end of all things as we know it. But it should, it was not going to be the end of Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. He's going to preserve a small part of the whole. So let us stand strong. Let us stand firm in the Torah of Yahweh and all of his promises. Believe me, what I just read are promises. They shall come to pass Yisra'ya. So let us keep our vow yes, unto Almighty Yahweh yes, yes. and stand, hallelujah, upon his Torah. Yes, and at this time, let us stand, hallelujah, upon our feet, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And let us turn unto Jerusalem. Yes. And we're going to pray unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you hallelujah. for this evening, for this night, Yahweh. For even though, Yahweh, the darkness has come upon us, still yet the light of your Torah shines bright in the lamps and in the hearts of Yisrael. So 
In this we do barak you for Yahshua HaMashiach. We do barak you for the offering at the stake, for the shedding of his dawn, for the cleansing of all of our sins, Yahweh. And we do barak you for all those that have gathered with us here at Teshu Community. And for all those that have gathered by via of live stream, yeah. that you would, Yahweh, give your beloved, your people, rest on this night. And that your Ruach HaKodesh would pour out upon us, Yahweh, and fill us, Yah, yes. fill us okay, until we cannot be filled anymore. Right. And in all things we do, Barak, you, in the mighty and precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh, hallelujah. Yabaraki, all, Ko Yisrael.